Everybody, welcome back. My name is Yumble, and today I'm here to talk to you about timed traffic lights in City Skylines. There are default timed traffic lights that kind of come with the game and automatically appear anytime you connect two major roads or any collector road to an arterial or anything like that. And I recommend getting rid of the default lights entirely, and I'm going to show you why and how you can use Traffic Manager to add your own traffic lights and time them yourself. It's really rewarding and really useful. I'd like to welcome you to Rolling Waters. This is the city that I'm building on Twitch currently. There's only about maybe 1,900 people living here, but it'll, I think it'll work fine for our purposes today. Um, so we're talking about manually timed traffic lights using Traffic Manager, essentially. And before you even begin doing this, I would recommend going to Traffic Manager and changing a setting. So we're going to open up the settings menu here, go to Traffic Manager, go to the Policies button there, and there's an option here that says Automatically Add Traffic Lights, if applicable. This is what the game does by default, and it means that anytime two major roads hit one another, or anytime uh, like this would cause a manual traffic light, and it actually did cause a manual traffic light, we'll see it there. There we go. So this is a um, this is a default traffic light. This is a what I would call a vanilla traffic light with vanilla lane settings. So this is all default, and it can work fine for now, but once this city grows a little bit, this intersection is probably going to get hit pretty hard with industrial traffic coming all the way down to this area. So in preparation for that, let's see if we can't get this up to snuff. So if you haven't already turned off that setting, you can always go into Traffic Manager and hit Toggle Traffic Lights. And I'm just going to turn that off entirely. We don't we don't need any traffic light there right now. Um, we are going to show this intersection some love though before re-adding the traffic light ourselves. You know, a, a proper timed traffic light. First, I recommend going to your lane arrows, and generally, depending on the lane configuration that you have, you can take the control button, hold control, so click lane arrows, hold the control button on your keyboard, and then left click the intersection, and you'll see what we have now is dedicated turning lanes. So I think that there used to be some arrows that were pointing straight and left and right. And that's kind of a mess. Think about yourself in traffic. It's really nice if you are if you have a dedicated left-hand turn lane or a dedicated right-hand turn lane and the, and the car is going straight through. If they don't have to wait for the left turn and the right turn, then that's great. That frees up a lot of, of headroom for traffic. So always start with your lanes, in my opinion, before you go to set up a, a timed traffic light. Um, a, little, a little hack. <laughs> You can do the same thing with timed traffic lights, almost rendering this video useless. Almost. I have I have an index finger in the air right now. It's almost useless, but it's not. This is this is important. This is a good place to start. Hold control. So click your timed traffic light. This is a timed traffic light button in Traffic Manager. Hold control, click, and voila. Much like the uh, <laughs> much like the lane arrows that we just set up by control clicking in Traffic Manager, we just set up a timed traffic light automatically. So the great thing about Traffic Manager is it knows when you have a four-way intersection or a three-way intersection. I'm sure there's a three. So like over here, you I could control click this one and it would automatically know how to set up a three-way intersection. Assuming that there's no extra transit in it or anything like that, if it's just normal with with pedestrians, maybe some bikes and cars, um, that's that's a really good option. That's a really good place to start. And let's go into what that actually did. Let's let's talk about the actual menu here and the counters and what everything means. So this is the timed traffic lights manager window, I guess we'll call it. Uh, you can hit the show counters button on an already set up timed traffic light if you're curious about how long the, the light is counting down or uh, counting down from red or green and how long the traffic flow is, uh, how long traffic is allowed to flow from one direction. But the real anatomy of what's going on here, you have to actually stop. I'm going to pause the game and hit stop on the traffic light. And these are the, the states. So this is what actually matters. Think of a, a traffic light at a four-way intersection. Think of there as being phases. And the first phase, the, this is set up automatically. I didn't do this. Once again, if you control click an intersection, set up your turn lanes by control clicking with the lane arrows, and then set up your timed traffic light by control clicking with the timed traffic light button. And this is what you'll get in a four-way interchange, a uh, four-way intersection, rather. So state one, you can see it there, two, three, and four, right? Uh, when you initially set up a traffic light, I'll show you this later, um, a more manual way to do it, but I figured we'd just get an overview real quick. State one, if you hit the edit button, you'll actually see what's going on here. So state one 
is this light over here. All three arrows turn green. Uh, pedestrians are not allowed to cross here. I generally leave pedestrians on auto. I haven't really done a, too much of a study on, on how pedestrians fit into this whole thing. I have done intersections where you have to accommodate for cyclists, and that's fun too. Add a phase for cyclists, a phase or two for, for bikes. Um, but, but anyway, looking at phase one, this is primarily an auto interchange, so let's focus on that. The minimum time is three seconds. The maximum time is eight seconds. That's a good starting point, I'd say. So that means that this, let's imagine this intersection has a sensor on it, or in real life, there will actually be cameras or sensors that, that kind of count vehicles or sense vehicles as they approach or as they wait at the intersection. And it'll actually uh, increase in efficiency by changing the cycle once the, once the phase has completed. So once this angle's out of cars, once this direction runs out of vehicles to pass through the intersection, there's no point in this staying green. You could have another area start moving. So that's why, where the minimum time and the maximum time come into play. If you find that vehicles are not clearing entirely from one side, you can either increase the amount of lanes and let's say if there's a, a left turn that's sticky and there's a real backup on the left turn, maybe add a second left-hand turn lane. I don't think that's the case here, but if there were a disproportionate amount of vehicles trying to get from here to the left, add a second one, you know, go back to your, go back to your lane arrows and you can change uh, you can change them to a, a left-hand turn, dedicated left. So that's that's fine, you know, just as an option. Uh, so this is back in the traffic light menu. Phase one is all three of these green. So this this side gets a green light, and also this side, just the right-hand turn gets a green light. So there's no conflict there. I don't have U-turning turned on, so this vehicle is not allowed physically cannot it, in terms of the rules of the game nobody can make a u-turn here in this in this what would potentially be a dangerous situation of an intersection they're all going left to here so these guys can go right into this uh into whatever lane they want here just to get them out of the way because why not and generally when you let one side through there's another side that can be making a right hand turn conflict free so keep an eye out for that when you're setting up a manual traffic light uh, the second step here, so state two, I'd, I'd like to call it phase two, looks like they're going left. This is the default traffic light. I've never actually looked at what the default traffic light does, but I know they work great. <laughs> so let's see, let's get the why, the why it works great. So it moved one to the left, all lights green, pedestrians stopped. This light, this, this right turn lane here can go, same deal. Three seconds, eight seconds. Uh, the minimum time of three, max time of eight. I meant to say this earlier. Forgive me for the disorganization. This is all very off the cuff, and I, I hope you're enjoying yourself here. But uh, the maximum time, it, let's say you don't want to add a second turn lane. You can also increase the maximum time on a given phase, and that will allow time for the backed up traffic to find its way through. So if this, if, uh, you know, if this left here was finding itself backed up and you didn't want to add a second turn lane to it, increase the max time to 12 or 15 or 20 seconds or however long it takes. Just know that if you increase the maximum time and traffic is still trying to get out of this side as the sensor, <laughs> as it's waiting to, to clear or 20 seconds, whichever comes first, this side is going to be waiting over here, the, uh, the side over yonder. These guys are going to be waiting to get out because so far they've waited two cycles, one, two, they're probably gonna have to wait a third cycle before they're allowed to get out, and this is already full. So every time you add time, every time you add time to the max time, you're potentially shorting another one that probably is backing up. So keep that in mind. Um, and once you've made these changes, you can always hit save. Uh, I've never actually changed this. I don't know that I'd recommend messing with, with these things too, too much. Um, more for special situations, you know, it's okay. And flow sensitive, flow sensitivity, I, I recommend keeping it low, I would say. I think that's how quickly it recognizes that it can change before the maximum time has run out. So anyway, on to phase three. I'm, if I had to bet, I'm going to hit save. If I had to bet, state three is going to be these all green and these guys are allowed to turn right. Ready? Wait, I lied. Phase four, excuse me, state four. And lo and behold, 
We've got, um, <laughs> all of these are finally allowed to go. So this left will finally have its day. And these guys are allowed to turn right because that's been the trend for the whole thing. So that is a very default traffic light. Uh, I'm gonna hit start. It doesn't actually start. You can't edit it without hitting stop and you can't run it without hitting start. So now that I've hit start, we're back in business and we can hit show counters to see the result of this very, very default traffic light. I'm gonna hit three speed so this side can finally be allowed to enter the intersection. And the default one is clearing. All I look for in a successful traffic light is does the intersection clear? Does the car at the back waiting get to go? And that's, that's all that really matters. Everybody gets their turn. It looks realistic. The pedestrians get to move. Cyclists can be accounted for. Um, it's great. And if you want to check a specific phase, you can always hit the skip button to skip through, you know, to skip through to see what the next phase looks like or the next state looks like. So the next thing with this, to take this to the next level, this is an automatic traffic light. I've shown you what all of the buttons do over here for the most part, the ones that I know how to use. Advanced users, please feel free to use the, uh, to use the advanced options down here. I've never had much luck with that, but this is a default traffic light. They generally work well, but check it out. You may come to a situation where you want to set up multiple intersections that work in conjunction with one another. This is just a single isolated deal here. This is just a single, um, I think I've turned off the traffic light. This is a single four-way intersection. What happens when you have something like, a, like an interchange where you want a specific light that you have to set up manually? Or what happens with, um, there's another interchange, let's say this one here, there's actually two junctions that need to work in conjunction with one another. There's actually two, uh, two intersections, we'll say, in this interchange, in this partial cloverleaf, that actually need to work together. And I'd like to do some stuff to set up a, a functional uh, a functional partial cloverleaf with lights. Give me just a second to see what that might look like. Before we start setting up this junction, I'd like to show you what we have prior to the junction being established. Uh, right now, it's it's pandemonium. Let's look over here. We've got cars weaving into traffic. We've got we've got uh, left-hand turn lanes that that are nonsensical. We've got um, <laughs> this marking is actually not relevant, so we're gonna see vehicles driving over it. I'm gonna have to fix that probably. But like all these left-hand turning vehicles, key example, just chaos. This is not how this is supposed to work. Uh, this intersection needs a light. This is what's called a partial cloverleaf. Very popular in, in Canada, the US, you know, North America uses a ton of these. Uh, in, in Europe, they'll often do kind of a partial cloverleaf and then they'll end it with a roundabout, which I think is a really cool trick as well. But in the US, in, in, you know, in North America, we're using a light for this left turn. And in this case, I think that this intersection should work in conjunction with this intersection, which is what a junction is. That's a, you, you heard that word I just used, right? Conjunction. Would it be a suffix? I don't know. Word word nerds tell me. Is it a... I think it's a, the suffix is junction in conjunction, right? So that makes sense to me. What I'd like to do is set up a timed traffic light. This is what it looks like when you start cold. We're starting from the, starting from the beginning, from scratch. I've selected the timed traffic light button. I've clicked the intersection that I really need to fix. I'm going to set up timed traffic light. So here we go. This is what it looks like initially. And if you know that you're going to be setting up multiple intersections that work together, like in an interchange, I would recommend doing this first. Hit add a junction to this traffic light, select this one. So now these two are on the same timer. I'm going to have to figure out exactly how they work together and why, but I, I would really like to have these work together. You can add a junction in other situations too. Like let's say you wanted this light to work with this light to work with this light. Um, in a real city, with real three, four, etc. direction interchanges, what they want to happen with their timed traffic lights, you can see my traffic generator over on, the, over, the, over on the other side. Ignore that. Ignore the man behind the curtain. Don't look at what I'm doing to make the video. Just enjoy the video, please. Um, what you want is packs of vehicles roaming down the street all at once, and you want them to kind of hit green after green after green. If you've ever driven in, in Manhattan, you'll know that if you do it right, if you're coming down a main a main drive, you may be at one light and you stop for a minute and traffic is passing, and then you see a green and you go. 
and then you hit another green and then you hit another green and people think like, oh, it's, a, I'm, I'm so skilled. No, that's the, the, whoever designed those intersections and whoever designed those lights, whoever planned that, that street and timed the lights, set it up as a junction. So you can have it. So this turns green. And then right when the vehicles reach this one, this one turns green and just have it all work. Um, in my case, I'm not really going to be doing that so much, maybe, maybe to a degree. But the idea here is we want we want to separate this traffic, this conflict, so that cars aren't running into each other. Um, so let's let's set up some timers now that we've got our junction set up. What I'd recommend doing is probably do do do. Um, now that we've got our two our two things selected, hit add step. Now this will take us to our first. I'm going to pause the game because it's distracting. This is going to take us to our first screen here. Uh, I don't recommend setting these up automatically by holding control and clicking, I would strongly recommend doing this manually. You know, this is this is a very specific situation. The automatic traffic light is not going to take everything into, a, into account. Um, part of what we have here is a light that can always be green. This can always be green because this is a, in this situation, this is a free flowing uh, situation for this side of traffic. We have two lanes here that will stay in their lane if we tell them to using using like a lane connector here. I'd recommend lane connecting in the interchanges if you don't want cars changing willy-nilly. Um, so that's great. And that means that we can allow this to always fro flow freely. I'm gonna set up the other the other side to, to flow freely as well now that we've identified that. So now we've got our free flowing lane coming in that will always be green throughout every single cycle and we're still on the first phase i haven't even added this phase yet what i'd like to do is say that this phase is going to be the green light for left turns and the green light for straight through and on this one we're actually going to have to change modes yes we're gonna have to change modes so this one we're going to allow the straight through traffic to go and the left turn to go as well. So we're going to have this this ramp of cars coming across the interchange or turning left. They're all allowed to go. And these folks will merge as they do. And let's do the same thing on the other side because this is a junction. We're setting it up all at once. They're all allowed to go. That's awesome. This is a good phase so far. I'm leaving it at a minimum time of three, maximum time of eight. I'll probably end up upping that eight at a later time, but for now, I'm really focusing on these lights. That's that's really what it comes down to. Now let's think, is there another lane that could go at the same time as these cars turning left and these cars going straight and these cars coming in? Is there another one that could go? The answer is yes. So let's do it. Uh, this is this is the, the lane. We can do... These cars are all coming in and turning right. Yes, so we're going to hit the green light button for that. I don't think we'll have to change modes because there's only one way that they can go. So while these cars are turning left, they can't make a U-turn. So no harm in allowing these cars to come in while these are stopped. These vehicles are still stopped over here, as far as I know. And I think they'll stay stopped because these guys are making a left into a single lane situation. I would have these right turning vehicles stop or at least yield to them, but yields, here's the thing, just a side note, yields and stop signs apply to the entire row, not just the lane that you want it to apply to. So I'm gonna use lights to, to solve all of this. So that looks good to me. While these vehicles are turning left as evidenced by this guy, observe, these guys can go right, I love that. So let's go make that same change over here. These folks will be allowed in. And I like that. I'm gonna leave the uh, I'm gonna leave the pedestrian light on auto, and just hope for the best there. I really don't want too many pedestrians in this anyway, um, so I'm just gonna leave that on auto, and we'll see what happens. So that I think is a good first phase. So now we've got our state one established. State uh, state two is on the way. Hit add step. And what do we know? We know that we can leave this one green because this is free flowing. They're coming in. They've got their own lane. They'll merge with these guys, no problem. What I know is that these folks have not gotten to go yet. So this lane, the, the, this set of lanes here is waiting for these guys to turn left and these guys to turn right. And there's no reason to, uh, look at this mess here. Ignore the mess, that'll clean up. 
but I know that these vehicles need to stop so these guys can go. So let's let's use logic here and, and follow through. Let's turn off the that left turn. So now there's a red light here. I'm okay with these cars continuing to go. I think that they should keep on keep on moving straight through, merge with these guys, free flowing, love it. I think that this one should be entirely allowed to go now. I think that no problem there. These can go. So these cars are making a right conflict-free because this left is no longer coming in. And these vehicles are going straight across, and we don't even need to change modes because we want to stop all these vehicles at the same time because they're all hitting the same conflict. I will say while these cars are coming in, I would prefer if the if the interchange vehicles actually stopped. For the lane math that I have set up here, we've got we've got two lanes coming in this way and we've got two lanes coming around here, and I'm not going to make these two lanes merge together. So we're actually going to force these vehicles to stop. And I think that would be a smart way to do it. So let's make that same change on the other side. Just to reiterate, we're going to stop the left turn. That's important. Let the let the, the through traffic go through. That's fine. But stop this left turn. We're going to go over here and we're going to allow these cars to have their turn, to have their, their day. So the straight through can go because now there's no left. The right turn can go because there's no left coming in there into the one lane. And these vehicles are going to have to stop for now. And that, I think, is the two phases. Let's let's see if I'm correct. I'm gonna I'm gonna add this. Don't forget to hit add. Don't forget to hit start. And let's see how it works. So far, it seems to work wonderfully. I think we've got it. So the free flow lane is flowing. The through traffic here will always be flowing. Let me hit show counters to show you what that means. So this will always be 99. This will always be 99 because it never actually changes. This being the straight throughs. When the left turn goes, these vehicles all stop. Then these vehicles get to go once the lefts are completed and the cars coming in from the highway get to stop. And part of the beauty of this, it's identical on both sides, but the way the timing works out actually, the left hand turn um, will sometimes turn green right, right when these vehicles get to it. So on occasion, I'm sure I could really micromanage this to ensure that it happens, but you can see those last vehicles, they just get to go right away, which is kind of nice. So now these vehicles are being allowed through. Let's see if the left-hand turn opens up in time. Oh, it changed early. I could probably be a bit stricter with the timings to ensure that this happens, but I'm confident that this type of arrangement would, would work great with much higher traffic. Once again, this is a city of 2000. Um, but we're, we're only serving a, a fraction of what this interchange, uh, this interchange could handle. This interchange could dump many, many vehicles on and off the highway very, very quickly. And for realism, it's good to add a light because otherwise it's just pandemonium at the, at the spots. Also don't, don't, uh, don't be shy with, with node controller and, uh, intersection marking tool. Intersection marking tool can allow you to kind of beautify the interchange in a nice way to fill in the, the empty space that's usually in the middle of an interchange. But I'm going to call this a success. So today we learned how to do a uh, we learned how to do timed traffic lights in City Skylines using Traffic Manager. We learned how to how to set up junctions using timed traffic lights. Um, I think that's going to help with realism a lot in your cities, and it gives you a, a ton of control, especially if you're into creating traffic problems that you then have to fix, like I am. I find myself dipping into to timed traffic lights and creative junctions and creative intersections a lot. Um, feel free to check me out over on Twitch. I play games. Uh, I play, well, this game. I play Skylines two days a week on Twitch. Um, you know, let me let me know if you have any questions in the Discord. Feel free to join. Definitely subscribe here if you like what I'm making. I've got a lot of other tutorials and other, like, interchange builds and things like that. Uh, let me know if you have questions in the comments as well. I tend to respond to everything. I literally respond to everything. So hit me up. Come say hi. Uh, guys, thank you so much for watching. Looking forward to see you, seeing you in the next stream or the next video.